All right, when you have a trust, when you have a revocable living trust or even a, a, an irrev irrevocable trust, you typically are the trustee, meaning that you're the person, um, you're creating the trust often, you're the one deciding what assets are gonna go into the trust, you're the one deciding uh, the distribution, when people are gonna get anything from those trusts, uh, anything from that trust. When you pass away though, you have to have what's called a successor trustee. And that's the person who's ultimately going to make all of those distributions for you. So it's very important that you that you name that person for, for two reasons. Number one, let's say that you're still alive, right? And so typically, um, you know, typically if you're married, you name each other as as trustees. So if husband passes away or one of the spouse passes away, the surviving spouse can continue operating the trust, can continue managing it. But let's say after the death of one of them and the surviving spouse is still the trustee he or she becomes incapacitated. Maybe they have Alzheimer's, they have dementia, they're unable to, to manage their affairs at that point. They would need, or that person would need, a successor trustee to step in to continue operating the trust, to continue you know, doing things, and to ultimately take care of the person who, who is now incapacitated. That person, again, the successor trustee, would and should typically be named in the trust. If they're not, if for whatever reason the trust you have doesn't name a successor trustee, or maybe the successor trustee that you had named, they themselves have passed away, or they themselves uh, are currently incapacitated. If you don't have anyone else named in your trust, then typically what's gonna happen is the court, there will have to be a court proceeding in order to name a successor trustee, which for a variety of reasons, most people uh, don't, don't want that to have happen. So our, our suggestion is you're going to have yourself named as the trustees, but then you probably want to have two successor trustees, right? So very commonly what will happen is you'll name one child as the successor trustee. So when something happens to you and your spouse, or if you're single, something happens to you, uh, that person can step in as the trustee. But if they're unable to, maybe they're, again, maybe they've passed away before you have, maybe they're incapacitated, or maybe they just don't want the job, right? They don't want the responsibility. Then you would name an alternate successor trustee, and that person could then step in. And so those successor trustees, again, they really act during two, two time periods, either one, while you're still alive, if you are unable to act as the, the, the trustee, you're incapacitated, something's happened. And then secondly, after you've passed away, they step in. Now, most people, uh, the majority of people are gonna choose a loved one, a sibling, or a, a child, a sibling, something like that. But you could also look at naming a trust company, a corporate bank uh, tr trust company, or there are also uh, individuals who serve as professional trustees. Those are all options, um, but, but ultimately you wanna have uh, a successor trustee named, and ideally you also have a successor trustee named in the event that that first trustee couldn't serve.